Crisis, Outlaw, and No Time Events. We are live every Monday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Take it away, boys. Hey, good evening, everybody. Welcome to the season finale of Racers News Network Live. This is going to be our last show for 2021. We had a banner year to kick it off, and uh, we're going to take the next couple of weeks off for the holidays and get ready to power up and be good to go for 2022. But we have tonight, we're lucky to have um, Robert Fortuna, who is your NHRA Division I top sportsman champ, is going to be joining us here in just a couple of minutes. You can see him right down there. And uh, of course, we have to my left, actually on screen to my right, uh, Pete Sanka. How are you, buddy? Doing good. How about yourself? Good. So uh, let's talk a little PRI before we get to our champ. How, what do you think about that? Works for me. So you you got to go. I did. My uh, my my fridge decided I wasn't going. <laughs> So it, it. it stole my my PRI money. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, how was it? It was good. Um, Thursday was a little bit on the slow side, uh, and I thought that that was going to continue through the rest of the weekend. Definitely did not. Uh, Friday was a madhouse. Uh, very very busy. Um, you know, I have no way of knowing if anyone was buying anything or if they were just window shopping, but uh, definitely a lot of people there. And I can only imagine I left Saturday morning. Uh, I can only imagine Saturday was probably even worse than Friday just because it's Saturday. Uh, anything, anything was better than last year, though. Uh, yeah, well, last year there was nothing. So, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Did, you, uh, did you get evicted from John Force Racing? No, am I supposed to? Well, remember, remember what we were talking about a couple months ago with the reaction time stuff. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, no, I I flew under the radar on that one. <laughs> did you uh, did you get the chance to take any of the tours? Because I know in the past you had you had done a couple. We didn't. Uh, I was fortunate enough to do a tour of Schumacher's. I want to say in eighteen. And then in 19, I went through Forces Place. Um, didn't do any, obviously, 2020, nothing happened. Didn't do any tours this year. Uh, Duran is actually usually the one that sets him up. And he oh, okay. went with us this year. So uh, it, was, it was a pretty easygoing year. I will tell you that uh, it was definitely light on vendors. Um, I don't know how light. I'm going to guesstimate and say probably anywhere from 15 to 20 percent uh light which again considering everything that's going on uh it wasn't awful um it was kind of a nice starting to get back into the swing of things year and uh hopefully next year it'll be full boat again and ready to go i, I hope so because things are going haywire up here in, in my neck of the woods yeah you know, we're true. we're number one in the country yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, it, it's getting crazy here, too. I don't know. It, it's almost like you just kind of – I don't know how you guys feel about it. I'm just tired of hearing about it. I, I am so over it. It's, what, it's whatever the hell is going to happen is whatever's going right. to happen. Exactly. I've, I am doing and have done everything I can to try and avoid it. So, at this point, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, uh, I'm just – I'm so tired of every news station and every email we get from our kids schools or in my school and i'm just i'm so sick and tired of hearing about it yeah i mean i i personally have have been the entire time dead set against getting the, the backs i wasn't going to do it i wasn't yeah. one of those you know vast right-wing conspiracy not getting it types but when we went on vacation back in august down to dc me my wife and my son yeah the deal with the smithsonian's was if you got if you had your vax card you didn't have to wear the mask right you know it's dc it's it's the beginning of august it's going to be hotter than hell sure i'm like all right whatever i'll do it that way i don't have to wear a mask of course we get down there guess what you have to wear a mask <laughs> i'm like <laughs> I, 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 I couldn't win either way so it's just 
whatever. It is what it is. And like I said, whatever whatever is meant to happen is is gonna be whatever happens, I suppose. The good news, the good news with you is you're so weird we wouldn't be able to see any side effects anyway. So <laughs> <laughs> you know you've known me long enough to know that. <laughs> it's all good. Yeah. All right. So tonight we are blessed beyond belief to have uh Again, the NHRA Division One Top Sportsman Champion, um, Robert Fortuna joining us. Good evening, Robert. How are you, buddy? Good, guys. How are you? Good, good. So I, I want to kick it off with the one question I've been thinking about so far the, over the weekend. Your truck. Yes. Is that an old pro stock truck? No. No? Is it built for... Top we built it for Super Comp right when in 2001, right when they ended the class. So it was originally a Super Comp, built for Super Comp. Okay. All it's right. a pickle chassis sure. that they welded together. And then Montana Brothers on Long Island mounted the body and did the tin work for me. Oh, nice. Because it, it's a beautifully turned out rig. Thank you. It's 20 years old. Wow. <laughs> really? I, yeah. I, I wouldn't know. Wouldn't even have guessed that. Yeah, we take good care of it. Yep. I didn't look that good when I was 20 years old. I don't know about you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> they say things get better with age. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> I'll be fine. Yeah, that. him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how how long have you been involved um in drag racing? 35 years. Wow. Yes. We raced out in Long Island when they had race tracks, and then we were at Englishtown for forever. Uh, what did you start out um, racing? A, I assume a streetcar. No, nah, well, yeah, it started out with a 10 second box Nova or 66. And then we raced that, and we started racing that in Super Comp and Super Gas. Early cool. days. Wow. Very cool. Um, so how, now you, you took that step. How long have you been involved in top sportsman? Um, last few years I played at new media cause they didn't have the car count. So, you know, I decided to get in and, and play. And then this year we just won new media, but run it up. You know, we did both, uh, both races, the opener and new media. And then we decided to follow it after that. So, so this you is had really my first year. You had no intentions of chasing points with the exception of you knocked it out of the park in New Media, so that got the ball rolling. Yeah, I was sixth in points after New Media, so all my friends said go and have fun. And I had more fun traveling with my son yep. and doing that. You know, we, we doubled up at New Media and then we doubled up in Virginia together. So it, it was more time with him. It was more, you know, more of it. The winning was just the plus, you know. Right, right, right. I'll tell you that I, I chased points once in Super Street, right. and I went down to uh, Silver Dollar, and then I went down to Rockingham, right. and I didn't do anything. I think I won one round at both races, right. uh, but the most memorable part about that is the experience yep. and doing it with my son. It was fantastic. Uh, you know, he also, still mentions it. I yep. still think about it. it <laughs> It was years ago, uh, and what you're saying, I agree with 100%. The winning's just a bonus. Yep. Uh, well, the experience will last a lifetime without oh, a doubt. Yes. He's all excited for this year. <laughs> <laughs> now, he, he runs juniors. Yes. Is, has he aged out, or is he still no, got time left? No, he's only 15. Left? He'll be 16 in August, so we have a few more years, so that's why we're just going to stick with these two. He did have an S10 that won 1150s that we raced at New Media. So he gets, he was doing good there with that, but then we started chasing and then that just sat. So. Parked that and started, ch started chasing the points. Yes. Nice. We've chased points at New Media for the last 10 years. So we just got comfortable. We leave Friday after work and then we go to New Media for the weekend. And we just got comfortable doing it, but then we were having fun doing the top sportsmen. Hey, it is very cool. 
the top sportsman and the top dragster to me are definitely one of the coolest classes. I mean, six second bracket racing. Yes. Well, you me know. on high sevens. Well, you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. Yes, fast uh, bracket racing. Very cool. Uh, Pete, go ahead. What, uh, tell us a little bit about your combo. Uh, what power it's, set? Uh, it's a 615 old aluminum built by JA Performance. Conventional heads. Um, I got a sheet metal intake with two dominators. Yep. Uh, transmission converters by Select. I've been using them for years, and both motor and transmission never miss a beat. It's usually my error. Yep. <laughs> I'm, I know the feeling. Yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but we did purchase a new motor from JA for this, uh, for this season, uh, for next season. So I should be, you know, at least make the feel without having to worry about not qualifying because we had just squeaked in at New England. So yep. we don't want to take that chance again. Right, right. Yeah, especially when you, if you're going to start playing with the points and defending your championship, right. the last thing you'd want to do is not qualify for a race. Exactly. Sure. Uh, no nitrous or nothing, just all motor? No, we had put it on for this season just in case we needed it. But one, we kept having problems. It wouldn't come on for us. And testing it worked great, but actually on the track, it would never activate. So huh. we gave up and thank God we didn't need it. So Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> What's your uh, oh God. excuse the dog? That's okay. Uh, what's your schedule looking like for this year? Um, mostly uh, all sorry, the divisionals. Yeah, mostly all the divisionals we're going to try to hit. Yep. And we're going to try to get to like three uh, national events. Nice. So that's our plan. It all depends on work schedule. Okay. Right. <laughs> uh, now, are you going to kind of play it the same as you did this year? You know, kind of, you know, couple races in to see where you're at points wise and if you're gonna continue to chase it or is it do you have it i probably chase that... it because we're having so much fun doing the traveling and stuff so cool yeah i think so no matter where i end up we're having fun doing it it's just like i said i've bracket raced for years and it was just time to do something different and, and we're having fun so i i never want to guess that that truck of yours is 20 years old yes <laughs> That makes two of us. The nose has yeah. been fixed twice, and but otherwise the rest of the truck has been the way it's been. Now, you, you just mentioned your schedule. Now, are you going to just stick to, to Division One? or are you thinking about heading to Florida? I probably year? don't have everything ready for Florida, so I'm probably going to miss that. So it'll be everything northeast, and then at the end of the season, where we are will depend on where we go. Okay. Very cool. We were planning on going to Rockingham this season, but Ronnie, number two, he called me and said he wasn't going and then I can relax and that I had, you know, he was giving me the championship. So my son was upset, but I was happy. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I would have made him clean the truck just in case. <laughs> oh, we always do. <laughs> and he's good. He enjoys it. So <laughs> that's good. Now, how many years has your son been in a junior? Since he's seven. Since he's seven? Yeah. All right. And since he's been 12, he was racing my dually. We we have a special relationship with Bob at the New Media. So we get to, we drive with him and he's been allowed to do more or less whatever he wants. <laughs> nice. 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 Nothing wrong with that. Now yeah, we're very yeah. lucky. Now, is he going to do any of the junior street as well this year or just well, going to well, run a junior? We sold his junior street car. You know, we sold his pickup truck. And we're just going to concentrate because so far every divisional hasn't had junior street. So right. we decided just to concentrate on top sportsman and junior. And then the following year, we're putting together another car and he's going to probably go super gas racing. Good. Keep him in 990, please. Yes, we will. 1090 doesn't need him. <laughs> no, I know. Well, maybe the first, well, no, because we have a tube chassis, you know, we have a, a, a Haas car we bought. So he's going to run that in super gas and then Perfect. he'll still run his junior. So he'll, he'll yeah. be busy. <laughs> good, good, good. Yes. <laughs> I'll yeah. be busy avoiding him too. If you're... <laughs> he, he's still scared of having Taylor, Taylor Nobile and, uh, oh, and yes. super street with him. Oh yep. God. There's, <laughs> you know, I, I got to tell you for the class, that's supposed to be a starter class. Yep. Good Lord. Oh yeah. We tease James all the time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he beat me in New Media. 
Yeah. I, I went red, but yeah. Right, but he got he in had, your head. <laughs> he had he had Jason come over to me and say, the old man said, take it easy on him. He doesn't know how much time he has left. <laughs> Literally, as I'm putting my helmet on. Like, yeah, well, that deserves a 10% discount. <laughs> exactly. That's what I'm talking about. Yes. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so how about the sponsors that help you out? Really, it's just me. And your right rear pocket? What's that? You, that you and your right rear pocket? Yes. I work a lot. <laughs> yeah. I never really, because we were bracket racing, there was no, you know, and we were always at the same racetrack. There was no really big, you know, sponsorships out there. And I didn't want to have to be dictated where I have to go or what I got to do. It's just makes life so much easier that we can go at our own pace and I don't have to worry about anything. So now since you've won the championship, have you, have you had anybody get in contact with you? You don't obviously, if they have, you don't have to say who, but no, I haven't has it yet. Opened? no, nope, I haven't heard. I'm open to offers, but I'm not looking for it. I mean, I've supported myself all these years and I think, you know, as the future goes on, I'll be supporting myself. So Right, right. Now I have to ask: Is your son is your son right there with you? No, you want me to get him? Yeah, go grab him for a yeah. sec. Hey, Bobby! <laughs> Bob! I'm here. <laughs> Family portion of the show. Yeah. There you go. yeah, this is yeah. Now we're into the family portion. Okay. So, so since you're going to be running juniors again in 22, right? Yes. All right. If you guys come to Lebanon Valley, we're going to be doing a live show, and it's going to be all about the junior guys and the ones okay. who have made the step up, um, you know, into door cars or or uh, dragsters or whatever. So. Put that in your memory banks, and you can be a guest on that show, buddy. Great, we'll come looking for you. Yeah, I'll be in touch. I'll have it all set up and ready to go before that. We did one last year, and it was, it was, it was a blast. After I figured out why the sound wasn't working. Right. <laughs> so, so how do you, how do you enjoy the drag race and stuff? I enjoy it. It's in my blood. Nice. Now, you, what's the most fun part? About it for you. Crazy, so. We're we're gonna compare answers on this one. What's the most important part and the most fun part for you, Bobby? Traveling and spending time with my family. I would say that's a match. That's I'm a match right there. And that would be worth points right there. <laughs> there you go. Nice. Now is that is that mom is that mom hiding in the corner? Yes, over there? yes. You can come over. Come on, we don't, we don't bite. I promise. This is, this <laughs> is a family yes. show. Come on in. Yeah. So, what do you think about your boys out racing every? Well, maybe not every weekend, but <laughs> a lot. I'm very proud of both of them. I wish I could have been there for most of at it. least the races that they both won together. <laughs> now, how many times did you guys double up last year? New Media and in Virginia twice. And be the in Virginia. All right. Yep. Cool. You might have already said that. I went. No, I don't think we did. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, that's awesome. So it's it's a family deal. That's really cool. Now, do you try to? Mo What's your name, ma'am? Janine. 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 Do you try to make as many of the races as you can, or is it just schedule wise? I, I try, but um, she has I a have job. A real job. A real job. <laughs> so I can't take off as much as. Those who don't have real jobs. Yeah, there you go. So, um, but I, I get my Get my speeding tickets, meeting them at racetracks. Yes. <laughs> I own a small repair shop, so I I get a little leeway. My guys are great, so I can leave and they run the business for a day or two when I'm gone. So, I have that little <laughs> bit of freedom. Nice. So, so self-employed and the international bank of mom and dad. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes <laughs> I, I have an 18 year old i know well pete's got kids too but i have an 18 year old kid trust me i i know all about the international bank of mom and dad <laughs> oh yeah so, we tried well, to get him cool. to other things but he don't want to do anything except this so 
you know, it makes my life easier because I don't have to stay home for weekends to do anything else except go racing. He'll, he'll never have enough money to get himself in trouble if he keeps that, racing. That's, that's <laughs> what I was just going to say. Yeah. You know. <laughs> you know, my, my, my son loves motorsports, loves it, has zero interest in participating in it, but loves motorsports oh, with, every, oh. with every fiber of his being. So. <laughs> It's really cool. It's it's a lot of fun. He goes he goes with me as much as he can. I try to get him to go more because I need a travel buddy now with being yep. disabled, handicapped, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. And um, a lot of things I can't do by myself anymore. So I try to get him to go when his work schedule allows. Right. So but, well, that's uh, the fun part. I have a friend who's retired and he comes racing with us. His name is Nick. But Bobby makes him sit in the back seat because Bobby's got to give me the directions and you know where we got to stop for gas, what time we got to eat, and all that. And my friend just sleeps in the back seat till we get there. But with the dog, with the dog, wake him up, say we're here. Yeah, That's yeah. Awesome. But he, he's a lot of help with me dialing the car, and you know, so and if we have a problem, he's right there and knows what to do to get we get things straightened out. So he's real helpful. Nice. Now, now, what's your fastest ET and your fastest speed to date with that rig? With that was 767 at 178. We have uh, Frank Volpe yep. commenting, wanting to know how big the new motor is. 665. So I thought for sure you were going to say like a 283. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with 10 kits. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> and, a, and a pro charger for fun. Yeah, yes. right. So We're six to go, you know, 720s with it, 730s. So nice. right now, keep me in the field and not to not change much of my driving, you know, to, you know, so the way it looks, right? Right. Very cool. Very nice. Well, awesome. Well, yes, Frank, Frank Volpe was a big help in uh, Maple Grove. He had issues first round, and I was able to get the first round win. So he gave me the rest of the data for the day. Nice. <laughs> hey, listen, it's all about helping each other out, right? Yeah. So <laughs> not the way I wanted to win, but I'll take it. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, because it's funny because it seems like every class is kind of like a a, a family. You know, you have yeah, the first the first couple of uh, races. We seem to be like the outcasts. Everybody gave us dirty looks and stuff, but after Maple Grove, everybody seemed to warm up and, you know, and became very friendly, which we appreciated and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's like the high school click thing a little bit. Yep. <laughs> you know, you got the stock and super stock guys, you got the dot 90 guys over here, yep. you got the top sportsman guys over here, and then you have, you know, juniors sprinkled. Yep. And amongst oh. everybody else, amongst the whole group that kind of draws them all together. The dot 90 guys are like the homeless people. We just try and fit in wherever we can. <laughs> <laughs> we don't care. You know, I think we're going to do some dot 90 stuff because he says they're going to do, uh, Rob said they were going to do some top sportsmen and top tracks this stuff. So, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, we're going to try to hit some of those also just Good. to play. Yeah. He runs a hell of a program. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, he does. If you can go, my personal recommendation, having been there twice, it's an, an awesome event, is go to Uncle Buck's Pig Roast in, at Cecil County. Okay. It's, August, it's like the third weekend in August, I think, roughly. Okay. Yeah, it's it's an awesome, awesome race, awesome group of people. Listen, you said association. food. My kid's already interested. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yep. He's He's and, doing a uh, math question do. now to figure out how long it'll take to get there. Yeah, I mean, my do. wife gets aggravated because, you know, she'll buy all this food and he goes to everybody else's trailer <laughs> to eat and we come home with the food. <laughs> yeah, they, they do a huge, huge uh, barbecue on for Saturday afternoon when racing is over and the food all is... Right, very good. We'll definitely look into that. Yeah. And the, the competition in that group is... is I, I don't know, have you, have you had the chance to run many of Rob's races? I'll bet you since I've been racing, I've run maybe three of them. Yeah. And right. it's, they're, they're killers. I mean, it's, it's the people it's that very seldomly do you see people there that aren't at the divisionals. So yeah. if they're racing the divisional series and they're taking time out of their schedule to also race that series, 
that means they got a boatload of laps under their belt. And there definitely isn't too many slouches in the group, if any. They're uh, they're good. They're very yeah, you've good. Got, you've got the boy Chesco's. You've got uh, Jake and Kelly Barbado. You know, Jake's been racing cars since Christ was a child. Yep. And I believe he worked on Jenkins Pro Stock stuff, too. Um, you know, the, the Don Housers. You got a ton and tons of people there, you know. And I, the years of experience in that group is yep. just mind-boggling. Right. So yeah, they uh, they definitely put a good show together. They have the uh, the Dave Stein Memorial Race coming up too. Yeah. Is that that's second week of September? First or second week of September? That's a hell of a race too. Uh, a lot of yeah. people chip in to build the pots up. Uh, you wind up racing for some pretty good money. Um, what did Super Comp race for last year? Was that the ten grand? I was just because that was the number that was in my head too. I didn't want to say it, but yeah, I think they raised for ten thousand dollars last year for yeah. one race to win it. So yeah, it's a it's a he puts on a really good series, and if you can find time to put it in the schedule, you'll definitely enjoy it, no doubt. Okay. A, a great great series, you know. I mean, since I've been back involved in doing this stuff for five six years now. You know, it's been, you hear the most about, series-wise, next to obviously the divisionals, you know, the loop right. soil stuff, you hear the most on the East Coast about um, Mid-Atlantic Dot 90. Yeah. You know, so. Well, very cool. Well, listen, thank you for coming on and taking time to hang out. And no problem, I really appreciate it. No problem. And, you know, congratulations and enjoy your, uh, you know, your celebration yep. in January. <laughs> You know, at, at the lodge. So very good. I'm um, thank you. You're very you welcome, guys. Congratulations and uh look forward to seeing you guys next year. I will. Thanks, Pete. Keep it going. You're welcome. All right. Merry Bye, Christmas. Chris. Thanks, Happy guys. New Year. Take we'll care, talk guys. to you again. I'm yes, sure. Merry Christmas. Merry Happy Christmas. New right. Year. Same to you. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Robert Fortune, everybody. Your NHRA Division One Hot Sportsman Champion. <laughs> and family. Thank you guys. And family, yes. Yes, yeah. and family. <laughs> and family. As mom's running away. <laughs> yes. See you guys later. Have a good night. All right, take care, guys. Bye-bye. Awesome. What a great family, family, huh? Yes, absolutely. That's that's what it's all about right there. That was, that was really cool that, that his son answered exactly the same. Yeah. And he wasn't, even, he wasn't even in the room to hear it. Right, right. Yeah, that's that's about as cool as it gets, no doubt. Yeah. So, this is the winding down. The fat lady is singing for the year. Oh. <laughs> um. So, have you got your car torn down? Somewhat, it's, sort of. It's on the way. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's getting there. It's I have it up at school. Uh, I let the kids play with it when they get caught up with their work. And uh, yeah, we got a lot of plans for it this year. Engine, converter, fuel system, coolant system. We got a lot of stuff going on this year. So it should be made for an interesting spring. Nice. Um, without divulging the name, have you made contact with that person in, who lives in Connecticut who's going to be racing pro stock? Next year? Who lives in Connecticut? Well, or is in Florida, Connecticut. No, they you told me about if if you ever said that he lived in Connecticut, he'd probably never talk to you again. <laughs> New Jersey. Connecticut, New York. New I'm in Connecticut. Yeah. And for you know, <laughs> dude, for somebody that's three hours from the Canadian border. Once I get down there, you guys are all the same. And that, that's how they feel about everything north of New York. Everything north of New York is Maine. <laughs> yeah, it's Maine. <laughs> what the hell? Um, no. they're, they're ironing out details. Nothing is concrete yet. Uh, but it's, it's looking decent. Coming about. Coming about. Coming when about. it's official, uh, I'm sure they'll be happy to come on the show. Uh, and let everyone know what the plans are and all that good stuff. But I uh, don't want to spill the beans just yet until it's written in stone. Right, right. 
Oh, cool. So, you know, this is the end of our first year of working together. It is. This. And um, for those that didn't hear earlier, the, this is going to be our last show for 2021. We're going to take the next few weeks off for, you know, the holidays and stuff. And Pete's got, probably got finals and stuff to get ready. I'm That's done. Cool. How do you do? I am done. Oh, that, with college, the college stuff or? Just uh, just this one class, yeah. I feel last week was my last week. Now, with your with your auto program at the high school, though, don't you have, don't they have finals right before? Because at least that's how it was when I grew up. There no, we right got, uh, midterms are going to be the end of January. Or midterms, I mean, yeah. Yeah, I know what you mean. Same difference. So in a, in a technical school, it's called the DSA which is a district summative assessment. Don't I sound smart saying that? You you almost sound convincing. <laughs> like you know what you're talking about. Right. So that's just a fancy way for them to say midterm. Um, I guess when it uh, involves a trade, they want it to be an assessment. Um, but yeah, that's, that's going to happen. And ironically, last year, we didn't have them with COVID. Um, for some reason, they've, well, that for some reason, it, it's the DSA is half test, half hands on, uh, and it's an assessment of how they're doing so far. So obviously with most of them not being in school, uh, you couldn't do the hands on portion. So they just kind of foregoed all the assessments last year. So back at um, it again. Cool. Yeah, because you're, well, I, mean, I imagine you're done probably what, on like the 23rd or so? 27, 23rd, 23rd, we have a half day. 23rd, you have a half day. And then off from there. Right. So, like I said, I mean, um, you know, this is our first year of doing this. I'm very happy with how things have gone. Um, I know you are. We talk all the time. Yep. And, um, I hope everybody enjoys what we're doing. I mean, we're, we're here to have fun. If this isn't fun, we're not going to do it anymore. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And even, I mean, you've been very forgiving with my schedule with uh, getting busy the last couple of months. I pretty much switched to every other week uh, just to try and lighten my load up a little bit. And it's definitely helped. Yep. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's all about having fun, you know, making people laugh and, trying to keep people as informed as we can. Absolutely. And um, we'll be coming back for season two, um, January 3rd. Now I've already got a lot of um, January booked up. I only have one opening in January. Um, we're gonna cover a little bit of everything. We have kicking off with us on the third. Um, it's gonna be Mike Boehner from on the stop now what is on the stop pete uh it's basically um a monthly subscription which is extremely economical in my opinion um and it's basically a bunch of dot 90 racers that uh help each other out tremendously um i'll give you an example one of the first things that i saw was they had a guy out from Computech talking about the weather station that they sell. Excuse me. Oh, I didn't mean that. I apologize. <laughs> um, they sell a weather station that's extremely popular uh, in the dot 90 field. And not only is it a weather station, but it's also a run predictor. And uh, he basically set up his screen uh, and went through what everything meant and you know it was it was a tutorial on on uh how to use it and what it does okay. so, so it's it's very similar to what um lee and bud do it's it is um lee and bud get a lot more in depth with driving techniques uh they they hit you know starting line reaction time uh, they're more to honing a driver. Don't get me wrong. They'll help you a lot with their dot 90 program. They'll also help you out with, you know, hitting bottom bulb for stock and super stock. 
uh, analyzing time slips and weather and stuff like that. Whereas Mike's program is geared towards dot 90 only. And everyone in the group has something to do with dot 90. And it's more of a, Hey, uh, you know, I noticed that in this condition, this affected my car this much. What do you guys think? And a bunch of other dot 90 racers will chime in and say, yes, this happened to me. No, it doesn't. And this is why, um, Mike is also hooked up with a lot of people like, the guys from Computech or Hughes Converters, uh, you know, so if you have a torque converter question, you're going to have the gurus at Hughes uh, right there to answer the questions for you, whether you run their product or not, which I think is very cool. Um, you know, all the like when they had the guy from Computech on and they were talking about how weather affected your car. Well, it's not Computech weather. It's weather. Right. When you're talking 10 percent humidity and how it speeds you up and slows you down, you know, any weather station is going to read a 10 percent change. Um, so even if you didn't have a Computech weather station, it was a lot of information to help the program. So it's it, it's pretty cool, pretty cool subscription to belong to. Um, and then also joining us in January is going to be. I have to, and I, I messaged her the uh, last week and I told her, I said, now that your last name has changed, I have to keep looking at my screen and thinking about who the hell's Taylor Nobile. I know. I see posts all the time. God, I hope to God she's not watching. I see posts all the time and I'm like, who the hell is? Oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> she went out and got married on us. Now we got a different last name. <laughs> so um, again, Taylor Nobile and uh, Billy Kleinspin. Um, from Division One, Taylor obviously races Super Street. Yep. Billy works at um, Maple Grove. Yep. They were both selected for the 30 under 30 program through Drag Illustrated. I just missed that. Just only by 15 years. Only by, yeah, like 18 years. I was so close. Yeah. <laughs> um, they're going to be joining us in January to talk about that. And I think that's really cool that there's two people from one division right that are uh, uh, on polar opposite ends of the spectrum one works right. on the track one races yep and uh to be selected for that i believe uh amanda was part of that 30 under 30 i don't know if it was last year or the year before a couple of years ago i can't remember yeah. the exact date yep. um kyle Coltrera was also yep. selected for that program a few years ago. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there's a lot a lot of that's, but it's really cool to have two people, like I said, from the same division from opposite ends of the spectrum. Right. And it, it, even better is that they know each other very well too, yep. which is cool. Yeah, because I mean, Maple Grove, as Taylor's told us numerous times in the past when she's been on, you know, it, that's basically their home track. Home track, right. Um, let's see. Also joining us is going to be a good friend of mine um, from the from my old show. Uh, of course, I'm talking about Kelly Barbado, who's been around motorsports basically her entire life. Just short of forever. Just short of uh, they, I like that. Just short of forever. I and mean, again, her her dad, Jake Barbado. Um, you know, he's raced since forever ago, and yep. I'm, I'm fairly certain that he worked with uh, Bill Jenkins program, pro stock program. Um, you know, Kelly races super street and super gas, depending on the national event. If one isn't offered, if super street isn't offered, she'll run super gas similar to what you do. Correct. And um, obviously her dad um, is runs super gas only as far as i know he only runs super gas right. um so they're going to be coming on um look forward to talking to them and then uh also joining us is going to be roly miller from nmca and uh nmra the the sanctioning body with like 647 classes so which isn't a bad thing and I they think they have actually a lot going have, on, that's for sure. 
I think they have at the very least one new one coming out. Wow. This year. Very cool. We'll get to find out uh, more stuff from Rolly about what's going on with NMCA and uh, NMRA. Now, one of the uh, the big brouhaha's was the sub nine second, 150 mile an hour roll bar thing. Yep. Um, I have asked around and some people are looking into it to see if it's actually, it's been posted on numerous pages. Um, so we're definitely working on it just to confirm everything. But I will say one thing, we I put it up the other day and it's actually created a lot of really good conversation. Yes. Yep. You know, instead of it turning into a to a bitch fest, it's right. actually got good conversation and good stuff going back and which, forth. And, and it did turn into a little bit of a NHRA bashing session, which is totally it unnecessary, will. but whatever. If that's what you feel so you want to do, go ahead and do it. Yeah. Um my theory as you i'm sure you saw my post the technology the crash technology that goes into the newer cars far exceed a 68 camaro with a 10 point cage um and i even said to one person who didn't agree with me would you rather get into uh you know 140 mile an hour crash in a 2018 camaro or a 68 Camaro with a certified eight point cage. Which car would you rather be in? Neither. Oh, obviously neither. But if it was going to, I mean, we're talking <laughs> oh, about. I, I, would, I would totally go new school, no matter how cool the car, the old school car looks. Right. I would, I would be willing to roll the dice in a brand new Camaro versus, like you said, you know, a 1968 Camaro so, with everything under the sun in it. Now, here's another page that. A lot of people wouldn't consider okay you have an nhra certified roll bar um i'm trying to i'm trying to tread water very lightly here it's it's certified but we've all seen cages that you kind of scratch your head and say huh i i wonder how that got through or you know even though it's deemed legal uh could it have been done better to make it more structurally sound well i will tell you that every car that rolls off of uh gm chrysler or ford's line are all going to be made the same and they're all going to be equally as safe which in my opinion are safer than someone that puts a roll cage in a car um, you know, full blown tube, tube chassis, uh, Bickle, Haas car, totally different. We're not comparing apples to apples. Right. We're talking uh, a, you know, a subframe or a full frame car rolling exactly. off the assembly line in Detroit. Exactly. That Pete throws a, a an eight point cage in for the guy down the street. Correct. You know, I mean, even it goes with the newer cars, it goes beyond just the structure that protects you. Uh, it's got all kinds of crumple zones and, and shear plates to let drivetrain drop out of it and stuff to fold up so that you don't feel the impact. Even if you had a car that, that 68 Camaro with the eight point cage, even if you get into a crash barrel roll situation and nothing in the car fails, you are going to feel it so much more in the old school car because the old school car doesn't absorb any of the impact the it way it drives it right to you it's everything that happens to that car you feel in your bones whereas the newer car will crimple up and i let's face it it's Blow technology it apart, yeah it's technology and and you know i realize a lot of people that spent thousands of dollars getting roll cages put in their car probably get angry when they see a 2018 you know challenger drive down the track making a nine second run with no cage in it but you're probably safer in the challenger than you are the regular car right 
I got one of the a tech inspector from um, an NHRA sanctioned track and I were going back and forth on Messenger yesterday. Yep. And he, he brought up a good point. He goes, okay, fine, but what about the head bouncing around with no with no Hans or no hybrid, you know, or safety solutions or whatever? And, you know, and, with 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 the weight of the head, you know, the head the head is the head one of the heaviest parts of the body, if not the heaviest part of the body. Right. Then you add without a helmet. Without a helmet. Then right. you throw a helmet in there. I mean, my helmet, my helmet weighs about roughly two pounds. Yep. Give or take, you know, give or take a little bit. So you're you're actually adding a lot to this thing right here without it having any additional reinforcement. Like me, I couldn't do it anyways because my neck's so such a mess anyways. But he, I thought that was the legitimate point that he brought up. He goes, "Okay, fine. I let that guy in the Tesla plaid go down the track, and he runs nine seconds at 150 miles right. an hour." You know, tell him you got to have a helmet, but he doesn't have to have a neck restraint system. So I will tell you that while I agree with the reasoning for this particular rule, I don't agree with any of the other safety equipment lacking. Um, if you're required to have, and, and I, I know the rule isn't right, I'm just using an example. If you're required to have a Hans device at 150 miles an hour, then if you go 150, you should have that Hans device. Um, obviously, a Hans device works in conjunction with a five-point harness that you don't need if you don't have a roll cage. I get all that. But at some point, someone should say, you don't need a roll cage, but figure out how to put a five-point harness in your car that makes it legal so that you could be secured in the car properly. Right. Um, you know, even if it's instead of your shoulder harness going around the back bar of the roll cage, if they have a way to continue them to the floor and securely anchor them to the floor like you would your lap belt, something along those lines. Um, I, I, like, in, like, in, like in autocross and um, road racing, for street cars, they sell a, a harness bar that connects to basically right behind where the door latch is inside the car essentially what there amounts to the b to the b pillar yep um yep. yeah you know you can bolt them weld them most people weld them and then they just cut the yeah. trim around it and everything but yeah i mean you can set the height on it you can put your harness on right you know then again like you said you know obviously with a with a han says everybody right. who knows you have to have four to five point harness with it yep. to make it function. I mean, if you don't, if you don't think that they should put a cage in a car because the new technology is far superior, that's fine. I'll go along with that. But your, your 15 pound head is still 15 pounds, right? It still needs to be secured, whether you have a cage around you or not. Right. Fire still happens. Uh, and it could even happen more so in the newer cars you know, fuel injected, 70 pounds of fuel pressure, uh, one little O-ring let's go or something, and all of a sudden you got a fireball, right? You should still be required to wear the jacket, wear the pants, wear the gloves, the neck collar. The, you know, I don't think any of that stuff should go. Technology for crumple zones and structures, replacing a roll bar, I agree. But fire is still fire. Weight is still weight. You still need to be secured in the car, so... Right. That's kind now, of where I stand with it. Let's see. We'll use you again as the example. Yep. For your fire equipment, for yes. your fire suit, your you wear your pants, your gloves, your jacket. Correct. Do you have the minimum of what the rule says, or did you take look at it and go, this is my house, and I'm gonna put more on, I'm gonna protect it more than what that rule says I need to. So I have a Hans device that I have not worn yet, but I plan on wearing this coming year that's not required of me. I wear thicker gloves than my minimum. 
Uh, but my my pants and my jacket are the minimum for the speed that I'm going. And I also am putting a fire system in my car this year that is not required, but it will be in the car. Like that, it's all about it's all about you. It's what you know. You don't need to have it, but is it going to? You know, you have you have no, to look at the bigger picture of it. You know what, Chris? It's like anything else. You you always think that it can't happen to you. Uh, and you always wait for someone else, right? I mean, years ago, me and my buddy Matt uh, were going to English Town, and there's one uh, light pole that's like bent over, telephone pole. And he happened to be a little bit too far to the right, and his trailer hit the pole, uh, and he had insurance, and it covered it. And I'm thinking to myself, well, God, I don't have insurance that'll cover that. So you go out and you get insurance, right? Jason Lawrence, he had a misfortune this year, and he had a lot of fire damage done to his car. And you think, well, gee, you know, maybe I should get a fire system in my car. It's it's just learning from other people and learning from your own mistakes. Learn, learn by doing and learn by seeing. Yep. Yep. And we're stupid, right? Because we all know fire could happen. We all know that even though you're only required a neck collar, you're much safer with some kind of head and neck, neck restraint system, right? We, we all know that. But... Uh I, I always made the joke with the uh, with the horse collar, the U shaped yeah. one. Yep, yep. Your your head is like a Pez dispenser. If that if there, if something that happens, right? No, right. You would be better off taking the U shaped one and turning it around the other way. Right. But even still, that's it's, yeah. No, you don't. This thing don't always work right. There is a video of someone dirt racing uh i don't know what the hell they call it, baja racing or whatever the hell it is and it's a driver and passenger and the driver has a head and neck restraint system and the passenger has a neck collar and they went off in a ditch and they had a gopro set up right in the middle behind both of them and they both hit the ditch and neither one of them got hurt but you want to see the difference in head movement from the person just wearing the neck collar to the person with the with the restraint on. If if you watch that video and it doesn't make you go out and buy one, you have a problem because, good God, it's a big difference. It's, it's even like that video that makes the rounds on um, Facebook and stuff sometimes, a um, couple times a year, of the dummy on the crash sled. You got it. Who, who has the Hans on it? They do, yeah. a, you know, they do a with and a without. Right. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it's it's not great for turning your head and looking. Fortunately, I have no top end driving ability anyway, so I don't really need to turn my head much. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, it's it sucks, but it's a necessary evil, in my opinion. Right. Right. All right. So a couple of things I've noticed that have popped up. Uh, 2022 NHRA national event quotas. NHRA will be evaluating quotas on an event by event basis throughout the year due to scheduling variations. The quotas for the event will be released no later than the week, the, bleh, no later than the week the event opens for entries. It's a little interesting, isn't it? It it could be good, and it could be bad. Um, you know, I would like to think that they're going to pay attention, and if they see that they need to add more numbers to certain classes, they will. But unfortunately, it also gives them the green light to go in the opposite direction too so the people that want to bag on nhra will say they're going to screw you uh and the people that like nhra will say it's going to be a good thing so all we could do is wait and see the one thing that i can say if i had to complain to nhra about one thing now this was the last couple of years i didn't look at the quota for this year but in Super Street, you're only given one national event 
per division. It's bad enough you put a quota on it. It's always been the lowest quota of anything besides like top sportsman, top dragster. I believe the last couple of years it was 45. And previous years it was around 60. It might have gotten bumped back up to 60 this year. I'm not 100% sure. But in my opinion, I don't even think you should have a quota on it. If you're only going to give us one race per division per year, why put a limit on it? You know you're not going to get 150 cars per division. We don't have that many, right? If 70 people want to come, let us come run. We get one shot all year. Let us come run. And fortunately, I haven't had any issue getting in, even when it was only 45. But could you imagine 44, we get the race once a year for a national event in our division, and they're only taking 45 of us, and they'll take 350 friggin' stalkers. I mean, it's like, give us a break, will you? Right. <laughs> uh, I, I, I understand. I understand. what. Uh, since I've known you, that's one of the things I think I've heard you talk the most about. Yeah, and, I mean, it's and even, just an even even with, with Kelly – um, Barbado, you know, numerous times she's even said that, you know, give us, a, give us some. No, I wish, I wish they would do a national championship for Super Street, but I've come to the realization that they're not going to, and it is what it is. So if you want to run for a national championship, you got to go into Super Gas or anything else. But to me, that you know, if you want to win a national event, Wally in Super Street and you only got one shot a year to do it, ease up a little bit on the restrictions for how many people you're going to let in because 45, in my opinion, is just flat ridiculous. There's just absolutely ridiculous. Uh, from Rob Keister, the Super Street quota in Arizona is 60, which he said is a big jump. Okay, so they probably were 45 last year just like we were. Just looking at uh, people's questions. Yep. Uh, backing up just a little bit. Sure. Go to the to the roll to the roll bar roll cage question. Yep. Tom Hoover said so. Based on this theory, new versus old, why haven't seatbelts been extended because of material improvements? Improve of how the, how they're they're actually made. Listen, we could, and I agree with him because I've said that the seatbelt rule doesn't really piss me off, all right, because all the rules are made for, it's not made for the normal casual racer. They're always made for the people that will stretch everything right to the limits. We know all that already. That being said, I don't agree with the seatbelt rule, but I don't really have a problem with it. Yes, technology should be able to change all that. The problem is when you're driving down the return road and someone's lap belt is dragging, and we've all seen that before, right? Window nets, seat belts dragging on the ground all the way back. Well, if you replace them every two years, you get rid of all that stuff. And I'm guessing that's probably the main reason why they even have the rules in the first place. But as technology changes, yeah, we can nitpick every single rule that we want, but having to put a roll cage in a new car that's already safe is a lot more daunting task than replacing your five-point harness every two years, right. both expense and labor. Right. Let, listen, this is probably going to be kind of far out there, but let me. I'm going to ask it anyways. Parachutes on yeah. super gas, super comp and super street cars yes more so on the super street cars they not every one of them has one it's not right. required is that correct uh the the rule as far as i understand it for parachute is 150 miles an hour plus you have to have it doesn't matter what kind of car is there an age limit on a parachute no no, there isn't even there isn't even a rule. I I believe, and if a if a listener could correct me, I believe 
if you go 175 miles an hour, you have to pull it every run. Below 175, you don't have to pull it. It's just mandatory that it's on the vehicle. So you could have a parachute, and unless someone says to you, open that thing up, it can be stuffed with t-shirts, <laughs> trash bags, you know? As long right. as it's on there, yeah, it looks like a parachute. You're not required to pull it. Now, from a from a driver's point of view and from somebody who also builds cars, yep. do you think with the random tech stuff that that is something they, they should be able to reach in, pull the lever and pop it to make sure it's actually a parachute in there and that it actually will come out? With the random tech stuff, in my opinion, if you have anything on the car and it's required, they should be allowed to check it to make sure it works. I don't care if it's random. I don't care if it's weekly. It, you know, if I go to the track five times and every time I go to the track, they make me deploy my parachute, that's on them. If that's what they want to do, they can do it, right? If, if you're in a stalker and you go set a record and they want you to take your cylinder heads off, and then you go to the next race and you set a record. They want you to take your cylinder heads off again. You know, you have your choice to either keep doing what they're saying or get in your car and go home. Right. All right. Sorry, I'm reading a, reading a comment no, no, from, from Rob Keister. Um, so I can, this is him talking. So I yep. came in late with the new rules. Will we see the new cars? run super street or super gas as long as the driver has the competition license i assume he's talking about the roll bar roll cage 150 thing. yeah the the roll bar yeah i mean if it's if the car is legal and it, here's here's another issue that i had um and again i'm not going to get the times right but the people will know what i'm talking about uh the diaper rule all right. If if you ran in the nines in uh, it was a Super Street or Super Gas, you got to have a diaper. But if you had a nine second stalker, you didn't have to have a diaper. I that's something that I don't agree with. Right? Again, roll cages versus new technology and impact absorption. I get that. Okay. But when a motor blows up. It still puts oil on the ground, right? A new motor puts oil on the ground. An old motor puts oil on the ground. It should have a retention device. I don't care what class you would. So if your motor blows up in a stocker, the oil's safer that goes on the ground under your tires? No, it's not, right? They made the roll bar rule because the newer cars are safer. But they have this discrepancy with the diaper rule. And the last I looked, Oil is oil. And when it comes out of the oil pan and goes underneath your tires, it's probably even more dangerous on a nine inch slick than it is on my 15 inch slick. But that's besides the point. I, I, do, I don't understand that discrepancy. But in my opinion, if they say newer, you know, 2014 and newer, don't need a roll cage for 90 and slower, then it shouldn't matter what class they run it super gas, super street, whatever, as long as they're not eclipsing whatever mark they put on it. It wouldn't matter to me what class they're running. So with a car that is two to three seconds faster than your car, they have to have less stuff than what you have. Correct. And it's not my car is 1090 because that's my designation. Well, yeah, but I'm using your class as an right. example of, right. uh, you, you know, so-and-so shows up with his factory stock, you know, Cobra Jet. Right. Running high sevens, low eights, you know, yep. whatever. Yep, yep. Uh, yeah, they're required to have less stuff than you are in a car that, you know, you have more technology in your car. I have... I, I don't have crash technology. Right. You have. Right? So, so my tube chassis car on my Vega body has never been 
slammed into a wall with a passenger in it with all kinds of sensors hooked up to it to see how it would take an impact. Right. Okay. That's why I kind of agree with NHRA's new ruling with the newer stuff. They have more technology in the crash testing these newer cars than we will ever have. If we took all the technology from every crash we've ever seen and we had all the sensors in them that they use, we still wouldn't have the data that they have. That's why I agree with that end of it. But again, your head still weighs 15 pounds, regardless as to which car you're in, right? Fire still burns just as hot. So the, the joke that, that pops up every once in a while, I'm a NASA geek. Yep. This, this little old iPhone has more computing technology than what the lunar module did that landed on the moon. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. I, I totally agree. I totally agree. And I, I think it's foolish not to think that we should be able to change with the times. Now, again, someone that just spent $5,000 getting a chromoly TIG welded 10 point bar with a funny car cage in their 68 Camaro is going to be really pissed off that someone in their 2018 Camaro pulls up next to them and they don't need that roll cage in it. But at the end of the day, which car is safer? That's going to be NHRA's argument, and I agree with them. Random question. Tesla Plaid. My son's not here. I could ask him. He would be able to tell me in a freaking heartbeat. Is that the dual motor, the one that's the fastest? Honestly, I have absolutely no idea, but I am going to guess and say yes, because everyone says this is the rule for that car. So I have to assume that's their hot rod. But that car is like a low nine second car right out of the box, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Because there's no coming into it. It's, it's like, you know, as you well know, because you, talk you deal with it every day in your job both your jobs you know mm -hmm. and i'll let you step on the electric on the throttle in an electric car and it says yep let's go it doesn't go okay all right whatever yep. we'll, get, yeah, we'll right. get there yep you know it's it's instantaneous so well cool hey uh before we sign off for the last time sure. i want you to do me a favor and share some of the numbers of viewers that we have on a weekly basis. Because I give think me, uh, regular viewers will be pretty impressed. Give me just a minute, and I will be more than happy to do that. Now, last week's show was the ladies was, only show? was ladies night. Um, that show was actually the inspiration of uh, Fast Freddy's girlfriend, Carla, she came yeah. to me um, at the divisional at New England and said, hey, what do you think? And I said, you know what? I think that's a hell of an idea. And well, got let's together. Let's show for an example. Tonight is exactly one week old. All right. Give me a second here. I just got to get into that part of Facebook stuff. All right, so that was what the sixth. Correct. Now I'm going to preface this by saying that anybody that doubts me when I say these numbers, please feel free to contact me and I will screenshot it and send it to you because I'm not making them up. Yep. So live for ladies night. 15,963 views. Let me back, actually, let me just change the range for the. Um, and that does not include the YouTube channel, correct? Correct. I'll tell you the God's honest truth that these views obliterate the YouTube views. Right. Not just by a teeny tiny little bit. Right, right. 
but by a very significant amount. And again, like I said, I I challenge anybody that doesn't believe me. I will more. I'm more than happy to send a picture of it to you. I mean, the cool um, thing for you and obviously for me is we've seen this grow. Yep. Right. I when, remember. I remember a year ago around this time, we were like, "Holy shit!" A hundred people. You know, within 24 hours, 100 people clicked on the link and watched it. And then it was like when we hit a thousand, it was like, oh, my God, this is unbelievable. And then we, five we, grand and 10 grand. And it was pretty we went cool. To grow. From an average January 4th of 2021 is when we started. Yep. Okay. We went from an average of about a thousand views total a week. As the year progressed, it went up to about three to four thousand. Yep. Then it went up to like six to seven. I mean, we have some at the very beginning that were a lot higher than that. Right. I, I and one of them was was Fast Freddy. You know, but everybody right. tunes in when Freddy's on because it's like the old joke with Howard Stern. They want to know what he's going to say next. Sure. <laughs> yep. So that was high. Um, I mean, and a, this is a reality check. Uh, the show on the 29th was 2,810. Yep. Um, and I will say I do a much better job when I have somebody with me. I, I, I need somebody to work off of. Sure. You know, which makes sense. Because when you're sitting here kind of trying to, especially when you're in a, a, a slow, quiet time of the year, right. trying to come up with stuff to talk about, there you go. You know what I mean? Uh, November 22nd, 19,955. Wow. Have we broke 20,000 yet? Oh, yes. Uh, that was 22nd. Let me go back to the, let's see. 19,995. <laughs> what do we got to do to get five more people to click on that show? <laughs> uh, November 15th. 17,596 views. I went back 60 days, so just kind of bear with me here a little bit. I'm going by, I'm trying to go month by month. Yep. Some, some weeks just have more stuff posted sure. than others. Um, here you go, Pete. Uh, November 8th, 20,948. Wow, we did it, huh? That was with Mr. Keister, if he's listening. No kidding. Yep. Wow, 21,000. That's pretty cool. I remember our big thing was we wanted to hit 1,000 in 24 hours. Remember that? Yep. Right? Yep. You would text me at like 7 o'clock the next night. We're like, we did it. We got 1,000 in 24 hours. And now it's like, if we don't have a thousand by the end of the show, it's like, what happened? It's like, what the hell? <laughs> um, again, where the real there's reality checks in this though, which is really actually good, and because I can tell which ones are the ones that I'm flying solo on. Right. Um, November first, five hundred and twelve. Five hundred and twelve total views. Yes, that really? was just results. All that was was just results. Right. That was in right. thirty minutes. I mean, like I said, it, you know, was that on a and, night or was that like a Wednesday night show? No, that was a Monday night. Okay. All right. That was, that was about when you were getting ready to do your final project and stuff. Uh -huh. Yeah. You know, yep. and, um, I, and then of course, Jerron is, you know, he, he was getting into, you know, the, the finals out and there was not the final right, event. Right, right, yeah. Right, right. Uh, October 25th, 15,550. You know, if I, if I ran an average just by looking at these, I would have to say it's probably going to be around 15,000. Yeah. I'd have to really, you know, go through and. I got to tell you, I'm pretty proud of that. I and am it, too. It, I mean, I. Time to say two babbling idiots to talk about pretty much nothing. 
yep. could pull in 15,000 views a week. Yep. I'll take it. Imagine if they had a couple of good looking smart guys. Well, I've, I've talked to uh, a, a couple of our, our um, female listeners are interested in coming on next year and doing results with us. That is fine with me because honestly, out of all the stuff that we do, the whole results thing is the most painless, painful thing in the world. Exactly. Yep. It's painful. I know they like it, but it's like, I wish there was something that we could do to spice it up or something or. Remember, remember what I, what I told you when we had that phone call? Yep. Even if we added this and that. Right. It still would be interesting. Yep. So, but I, you know, and that's why when we started hashing out, should we do the results? Should we just skip over them? We put it out to you guys because right. we're not here for us. Right. We're here for what you guys want to hear a couple of fools talk about. And everybody wanted the results. So we said, all right, cool, we'll do it. You know, and a lot of it too is that when you get to the end of the season, especially when it's not local. Yep. It just kind of loses some of that, that flavor to it. Right. Right. You know, you're talking about a track that 3,000, 2,000 miles away. Yeah. Right. Right. You know, and people that maybe 20% of our audience will know. Maybe. Maybe. Right. You know, and maybe one or two names that we've actually, one of us or both of us have actually heard of, you know, so but um, we aren't going anywhere. No, no, it's uh, been a pretty impressive year, in my opinion. Yep. Um, but like I said, starting off, excuse me for just one sec, um, January 3rd with Mike Boehner, January 10th with Taylor Nobile and Billy Kleinsman. Uh, 17th is open if anybody's listening. I am also working on one thing that I'm not going to talk about yet. Pete knows about it. Um, the gentleman in Florida that I spoke of. And um, Kelly Barbado on the 24th. And Rolly Miller from NMCA, NMRA on the 31st. So the other thing that we need to realize too, and I'm sure most of you have figured it out, is that in all reality, we're a regional show. I think uh, predominantly Northeast to Mid-Atlantic, maybe with a little touch to the Southern states. Right. And we know that, but we're not going to just stick to our guns and be only, you know, D1, D2. We're, we're still going to reach out and try and get contact. No, I mean, I, I think the, the most aggravating experience with this show that I've had was we've reached out to other series and other divisions and ask them to give us their schedules and send us, uh, you know, weekly reports so that we can announce it. And they just don't. And I'm not going to chase people for results. If, if you have a series uh, and you have people tuning in and they want to hear their names called out, you got to help us out a little bit. I Work mean, with I, me, boy. you know, yeah, a five minute email ain't going to hurt nobody. And, yep. but I'm not going to chase them. No, even if you, have the printout from the track and you take right. a screenshot of right. it, send it to I mean, one look of at, us. Look at, obviously, we have to get our own NHRA results. But Rob Keister and um, Kenny Van Gorder, with both of their series respectively, I mean, I can't make it halfway through the day on Monday without my phone going off getting the results. They go out of their way to promote their series and – they want to hear, you know, the people that are in their series, they want their names to be called out on the show, which I think is great. Um, and we yeah, would Lori, do that Lori for Butler. any series in the country. Yep. And Lori Butler sends me stuff as she has it. You know, we talked about the sponsorship stuff and all that. Right. Um, you know, and send it to us because we're, we're here to do it because it's fun. And right to do the best job that we can to promote this sport. 
Absolutely. I have right. reached out to a local track also to try and get a conversation with somebody, but I've had struck out. I think you know which one I'm talking about. Yep. Um, but I've struck out, so we'll we shall see. But listen, we'll be back January 3rd. I am going to post the link every week between now and then to our YouTube page. 99% of our shows are on there. I put a couple up that just I just did yeah. and um, be sure to check them out keep yourselves entertained if anything comes up obviously I, I have way more time than he does um, I'll be doing my, my, my posting duties on our Facebook page and um, Merry how Christmas about, how about the last, last poll for the year God. You ready? Oh, oh, you have one in your head. Okay, yep. Yeah. Talk to me, boy. If you wanted to see something improved on RNN Live for 2022, what would it be? And don't even put any choices up. Let any listeners or viewers put up choices and then get them voted up. What would it be? And physical appearance for the hosts are not options, so don't bother listing that. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Before we, before we cut loose, you did just remind me of something. Give me a sec. Because I know Pete's got to go watch his soap opera and take a shower and have his wife tuck him into bed pretty yeah, soon. And fall asleep in about 30 seconds, yep. Yeah. Bear with me for just one moment. All right, all right. All right. We don't have to dive into this now, but food for thought. I borrowed this from Ellen Eschenbacher from uh, Midwest Drag Racing Series. I thought it was a really cool question. She, her, it was her idea. It was her question. She posted it, and I just shared it. Um, Racers, if you had to evaluate your safety program on your own race car, team, rigs, etc., how would you rate it? Honestly, what improvements in safety would you like to see in this industry? It doesn't matter if you run Nitro, Pro Mod, a 12 second door car, or you know, your Yugo going putt, putt, putt down the track. What would you like to see? And it's on our page. Um, again, it's under Ellen Eschenbacher. Um, she came up with the question, and I thought it was that's actually a really good. good. That's a really good question. That, I like that a lot. Yeah. So, if you guys have time, take a look at it, make a comment, and um, like Pete just said, if you want to see something improved, this will be our official season ending poll question. I will have the results read January 3rd. And don't if be you, scared. Uh, you know, if, be you say, if you say I suck, get off the show. We'll get someone else to take my place. <laughs> but what I, I want to know, listen, all I, at the end of the day, I want a better show every single week. So yep. let's hear the ideas. All right, if you want to see something improved on RNN, what would it be? As soon as I get this downloaded and put, load, and put up on YouTube, I'll put that up. Don't be shy. You damn sure ain't going to insult either of us. Yeah, you got that right. Ron might be a little offended, but that's all right. We can deal yeah, with that. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah. <laughs> so. Good stuff. Ladies and hey, gentlemen, uh, boys and girls. Merry Christmas. Welcome. Happy New Year. Happy Hanukkah to the people that already celebrated. Kwanzaa, uh, whatever. Enjoy it. So on and so forth. Welcome to the end of season one. We will be back for season two. Season two, coming at you. Peace. See you. All right, everybody. Have a great night. Enjoy the holidays. We are out of here. Have a great night, everybody. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. We'll see you all January 3rd.